Your snake needs red light to thrive in captivity, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you why, and I promise you the reason they need this light is so much cooler than you think. Now, when I say red light, I'm not only discussing the visible red light that you and I can see with our eyes, but I'm also talking about the red infrared light on the electromagnetic spectrum that goes far outside of our visible range. I'm not just talking about those red light bulbs that quite often pet companies choose to market as nighttime bulbs. I will talk about those at the end. I think those kind of create a little bit of confusion for people. So we will discuss these red colored bulbs, but I want you to know that I am specifically talking about red in general, including infrared. And at the end of the video, I'll also talk to you about how to properly apply healthy amounts of infrared light for your snake. Now, red light therapy has become so much more popular in the last five or 10 years in the human health and wellness sector. I'm sure you've seen those masks that people wear or people market sort of have that red light that you can put your face into or those panels that people stand in front of. And the way that those work is those devices devices emit near infrared energy. So typically somewhere in the range of 660 nanometers to about 900 nanometers, sometimes a little bit further, a little bit longer into that range. And that they stand in front of or they put near their face and they acquire all these health benefits from that energy of light hitting their skin. Now, it might be important to also note here that once you get past that 600 or 700 nanometers, you're actually starting to fall outside of the range of reds that you and I can see. So that becomes essentially invisible light, but it's still light energy that impacts the biological system. So I want to read to you some of the actual benefits that have been proven from red light therapy. The list is really quite astounding. Anti-aging, wound healing, faster muscle recovery, improved mental performance, mood enhancement, cognitive benefits, chronic pain relief, reduction of inflammation, improved sleep, and the one that we're going to really hone in on today is enhanced mitochondrial function, which means you're boosting the cell's ability to produce ATP, which is the energy you use to function. The more ATP your cells produce, the better you're going to feel, the better you're going to heal, and the more energy you're going to have. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to fold in a few clips of somebody named Dr. Glenn Jeffrey, who is a professor of neuroscience at the University College London. He is a red light therapy researcher. He is an a tremendous amount of information on this subject, so I'm going to use him to bolster the argument in this video. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, hey, stop, you cannot use human-related research or human-related studies and translate that directly to snakes or reptiles. But in this case, I absolutely can, and the reason that I can is so freaking cool. Now, the reason that this works is because the benefits that, or I should say much of the benefits that we receive from infrared light has to do with how the light interacts with the mitochondria in your cells. Now, we all know the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. That's the one thing we all remember from high school biology. And actually, Dr. Jeffrey does a better job, I think, of explaining it. He just explains it more as a battery. The, the mitochondria is a battery within your cell that provides the energy for your cell to function. The function of a mitochondria mitochondria is incredibly conserved through evolution. Every animal cell has, a, has many mitochondria in most cases, and they all essentially do the same thing. So it doesn't matter if you're a bee, a, a snake, a mouse, or a human, your mitochondria function the same. We've done a lot of experiments on animals. And what, we, what you find, in, this is highly conserved in evolution. What you find in a fly, a bumblebee, or a human is exactly the same in terms of red light metrics. Having well-functioning, healthy mitochondria in your cells is essential for well-being, no matter what type of biological system you are, whether you're a fruit fly, a bumblebee, a mouse, a snake, or a human, it is all linked, which means any of those studies that are done on inverts or mice or humans can easily be translated to snakes. In other words, all animals have mitochondria, which means all animals have the ability to utilize infrared energy for their benefit. It's very simple to think about a sun as a just beam of energy. The sun is blasting down this photonic energy onto the earth, and we as biological systems can absorb that energy and use it for our benefit. Now, infrared energy specifically has the ability to penetrate biological systems quite deeply, and actually in some cases, especially when you're talking about near or mid-range infrared, you can measure infrared energy traveling through a person. You can stand behind a person and actually capture some of that sunlight energy through their back because the energy travels right through them. This means that the infrared energy coming from the sun has the ability to access organs, muscle tissue, other tissues, and of course, thousands and thousands of your cells 
inside your body. It's actually passing through the body and activating the mitochondria. Now, we'll talk about that activation in a second, but I also wanted to make a point here. Once you get beyond about 900 to 1,000 nanometers, that's beyond our ability to see or well beyond our ability to see, that level of infrared energy does not pass through the body and actually in most cases is, is absorbed in the water molecules in your skin. So once you get beyond a certain point, that energy no longer acts as a, an ability to pass through your body and access your mitochondria. It sort of gets absorbed at the top layer of your skin and is less effective at giving us those health benefits like we talked about at the beginning. So what that means in terms of snake keeping, your ceramic heat emitters, your heat mat, and your heat tape does not activate your mitochondria in the way we're about to talk about because that energy does not penetrate past the sort of superficial layer of skin. So the question is, is how exactly does infrared energy manipulate mitochondria in a way that gives you more energy and makes you feel healthier? Well, this is a process called photobiomodulation, which is a big scary word that essentially means how light interacts with the biological system or how light interferes with physiology in some way or, or shape or form. Now, I don't want to get too far outside of my own wheelhouse here, so I'm going to let Dr. Jeffrey explain this piece. Okay, so there's something called a respiratory chain. And if we think about this as a series of railway stations, um, so a train goes along the railway stations and when it gets to its final stop, that is the production of ATP, which is the energy that the body uses. Um, various parts of that chain, various railway stations on the road specifically will absorb that light. In absorbing that light, they increase the efficiency of the mitochondrial chain. Now, as you get older, you can think about it, as you get older, the railway tracks on which the train is running become distorted, the train slows down, things just aren't working terribly well. Anyone who travels on trains in the UK will know all about that. Um, but it's simply, it, it, it is not complex. We watch light go in, we watch what light does, and it increases the efficiency of the train going along the railway line. Now, as cool as that is, as cool as the fact that infrared energy can actually allow the electron transport chain within your mitochondria to be more efficient, to give you more energy, to give you a bunch of downstream positive effects like better wound healing, better cognition, etc., etc., and by the way, some of the research that they did on bees and fruit flies shows better cognition in animals that have been exposed to red light, as well as more mobility and ability to climb up walls further and things like that. So there's just so many downstream effects that happen when the mitochondria become healthier with this photobiomodulation process. But what I find even more fascinating is the fact that this research is pointing to the fact that this relationship between infrared energy and mitochondria is a lot more like an on-off switch than a dosage-related relationship. So we know that if you go below ooh, around one minute, one minute, 15 seconds is the break point. If you give red light at any energy below that time period, nothing will happen. And it's not like aspirin. Take five aspirin uh, and your headache will go away quicker than if you take one aspirin. Um, it is something that we now know is a switch. When you do something, you turn the switch that improves mitochondrial function. And that switch, once you've turned it, will last five days. Again, doesn't matter if you're a fly, a human, whatever. Now, physiologists find this very difficult because hmm. in physiology, there aren't a lot of switches. There are a lot of dose relation dose relationships. So for example, if you're sitting outside in the hot sun, you know that the longer you sit in that sun, the worse your sunburn is going to get. Now, that is how it works when we're talking about UV and sunburn, but when we're talking about mitochondria, their ability to get activated, it's actually more like turning on the red light for a few minutes gives you as much benefit as turning it on for 10 or 15 minutes. It's just this this two or three minute exposure to an infrared light activates the mitochondria, not only in the section of the body that it's shining on, but the entire body. If you fire up the mitochondria in your shoulder, you actually start to fire up the mitochondria throughout the rest of your body, which is absolutely fascinating. And the interesting thing is, and the take home from this is, if you shine red light on an animal, and I think exactly the same as us, you change messages in the blood and the messages you're changing in the blood are messages that are associated with improving your mitochondria and improving your function. So 
if you if mitochondria talk across the body now we had an idea that this was true some time ago but um this study shows that not only do mitochondria improve across the body but some of this signaling is going through their blood so this really puts into context cryptic basking that we see by, by snakes as well as cryptic short-term basking. So quite often we talk about animals basking in the wild. They throw out a tiny half of a sm small section of a coil that's just barely in the sunlight. And we think, how is that valuable? How is that actually giving them any benefit? Well, this answers that. As long as the section of their body is being exposed to infrared energy, the rest of their body is going to fire up as if it were as well. And another point that's absolutely worth mentioning that Dr. Jeffrey had also shown is that the red light therapy he was using to look at people's retina or their eyes to help their eye health, it was something that the, the positive effect that those patients were receiving from the red light was something that lingered for up to five days after the treatment. So it wasn't that they were getting treatment every day for five days. It was that they had treatment on Monday and they were still seeing the positive effect of that treatment on Friday. So when we're talking about cryptic basking in the wild, that's something that could be done for a few minutes once a week and they would have tremendous benefit from it. So one of the things that we see in the hobby quite often is people talk about nocturnal animals not basking. I think it would actually be virtually impossible to be definitive and say that nocturnal animals don't bask because you'd have to follow a single individual animal for weeks and weeks on end to catch them basking. And like I said, if you caught them basking a small section of their body for five minutes, this is kind of arbitrary, five minutes once a week, that would be still a tremendous amount of benefit they'll receive from that light energy. So it's, again, you have to think of it as a switch. Don't think of it as a quantity thing, because if we're saying that maybe a nocturnal animal only basks 20 minutes a month and say, well, in captivity, what's the point of providing that 20 minutes a month? Well, it actually turns out that it, there's a huge amount of benefit that comes from that because it's acting as a switch. It's not the dosage amount. It's the fact that it's happening and it's having all these downstream positive effects. But it is such a fascinating topic. And I think it just, the fact that it's the mitochondria that's interacting with the light and that it's something that's conserved right through evolution, sunlight drive or drove evolution. And so it is such a crucial factor in health for all biological systems. And that's why I think it is just so important that in captivity, we're providing the opportunity for our animals to be exposed to infrared energy. Again, higher levels of energy that they're going to produce, ability to heal wounds, have less inflammation, higher cognition. Again, these are studies that were showing in flies, ability to think problems, think through problems at a more efficient level when they were exposed to the red light, live longer, live healthier. Those are all aspects that this type of energy will provide your snake in captivity. So I think it is a must. So the question is, how do we do it? And what the hell are those red bulbs that are done at night? Is that what I'm talking about here? So quickly, I want to address how to do this properly. To provide infrared energy to your reptile, it's incredibly simple. All you need to do is to provide a heat bulb, a tungsten filament lamp, either an in any incandescent bulb, Halogen is a little bit better because they do get a little bit warmer, so they do produce a little bit more of this infrared energy. But really, any incandescent bulb, any reptile-related bulb, or if you can still find some in the hardware store, those will work perfectly fine for providing this type of energy. Now, of course, having them on a thermostat or on a dimmer is definitely recommended, and you really should have that to control the temperatures. But that is all you need to provide this type of energy for your animal. So now quickly to address those red lamps, the lamps that are quite often marketed as nighttime bulbs for your snake. What that is, is essentially just a tungsten filament incandescent lamp with a red coating on the inside of the bulb. So it technically is filtering out, not technically, it is actually filtering out the greens and the blues of the regular light bulb, but there's nothing special about the light and the heat or the energy coming from those red bulbs. There's, they are not more infrared than a regular clear colored basking bulb. They're just pulling out some of the more lighter colors, the greens, the yellows, and the blues from the visible spectrum. So as far as I'm concerned, there really is no practical use for those red colored light bulbs within herpeticulture, within captive snake keeping. They, the claim that they don't disrupt the day night cycle, I don't think is quite accurate. The snakes can see the red light. So if you have red light shining in their enclosure all night, they're going to see that there's no need for that. I think in most cases, many snakes don't need night heat depending on the temperature of the room you're in. So if it's, I shouldn't give care advice specifically because there's just too many species to talk about, but you can use other sources of non-heat, non-light emitting heat sources at night if you need, like your, that's when your heat tape or your heat mat might come in or your ceramic heat emitter, but using a red light bulb at night 
doesn't uh, add anything extra. Really, it's probably just disturbing the night, the, the night cycle, the sleep cycle of your animal. And again, during the day, having a red lamp on is not giving them any more infrared energy, even though it's kind of confusing because you're seeing this red light. So you might as well just use a more naturally colored halogen or any incandescent basking bulb that gives you the nice warm yellow orange light. It doesn't need to be filtered down to visibly red. Hopefully all of that made sense. Again, this is sort of a fascinating topic. We got into the weeds on this one. The end of the day, your snake does require red light, not the nighttime red lights, but red infrared light needs to be provided to them to optimize their health in captivity. And if you aren't providing that right now, hopefully this video helped tilt you in the direction of figuring out how you might be able to incorporate that into your enclosure in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one.